So how nice would it be to sit back on the beach and just collect your dividends or just sit on your couch and collect dividends and just be paid to own different companies that are working 24 seven for you to earn you money. So that's what we're gonna talk about today and we're gonna look at the top six high yielding dividend stocks, five of which I own. So stay tuned to the end to get every one of those stocks because I think a lot of these are really good companies to buy for the future. And I also wanna to say too, if you wanna start getting some free stocks, use the links below. If you deposit $100 with Weeble, you get two free stocks. So that helps out me, that helps out you, and it only takes about five to 10 minutes to do. I own five of the six of these. So the sixth one I am considering buying soon, but yesterday I looked at the top penny stocks to watch for the next couple months and maybe throughout the rest of 2020. And penny stocks are good if you want to possibly be able to leverage your investment to double or triple in the short term, but they're also really risky. So on that list, we had a company like Genus where they were uh, about in a $9 stock and they decreased to about three or $4 recently. So they can be really volatile. And a lot of people like to go with dividend stocks. So they like the safety that a dividend provides. If you don't know what a dividend is, it's essentially when a company earns money and they want to reward their shareholders for owning the company, so they will pay you cash for having owned the company. So that is one thing that a company can do to reward its shareholders. And usually a high dividend stock, there isn't a good definition for it, but I'm gonna consider it. Really anything that's above 5% is a higher dividend yielding stock. We're gonna look at six of them today. One is actually an ETF, but we're gonna look at that too. Before we get started, I wanna come with the sponsor for today, which is the like button. So it really likes if you just tap it. It's the, it's the thumbs up button right below this video. And if you just tap it, turn it blue, it really appreciates it. And I appreciate it too, because it pushes this video out to more people. So we're gonna go through this. Now I will say, out of the six dividend yielding stocks, I think these are pretty good picks. Like I said, I own five of them, but be careful with high dividend yielding stocks. And the reason I say that is, if a company earns a certain amount of money and they pay all that out to shareholders, it's really hard to grow as a company if you're giving all that away. So if you're not reinvesting some of the money back into the company, it can be tough. So some companies will pay what they make and some will pay extra so they'll actually use debt they'll secure debt to be able to pay out their shareholders even more so be careful there are a couple things that i want to look through or that you should look through when you look through these kinds of stocks and one is that high payout ratio you want to be careful another is share dilution so if some stock starts selling a bunch of shares your dividend yield will go down most likely because they're raising capital and there's less money or earnings for each share. So be careful on that. You can kind of see if a company starts saying that they want to issue some more stocks or some more shares, that can be kind of dangerous. The other thing that you want to be careful of is stagnation. So this kind of goes out to a high payout ratio, but if you buy into a company that either doesn't have a long-term outlook or buy into a company that just hasn't grown much in the last five or 10 years maybe, that can be a negative. So while a lot of people are excited about dividend stocks, other people don't really like them because they think that there isn't as much room for growth. And these companies that I'm gonna show you today, I think they're gonna do quite well in the future. So the first stock that we're gonna look at is Altria Group. So if you know about Altria Group, they're mostly a tobacco company, but they also own large parts of other companies too. So they own Philip Morris, they own U.S. Smokeless Tobacco, they own all these other tobacco companies and operating companies. They also own Juul, so if you know those like electronic cigarettes. They also own Kronos Group, which works in the, we'll just call it the MJ space, I've said that before, but I don't know if I'll be demonetized if I say what they actually do, but look them up if you don't know. They also own Helix Innovations, and then they also own a large stake in one of the largest beer producing companies in the world, and that company is Ab InBev. So if you don't know what they are, they're Anheuser-Busch essentially, but they own Budweiser, Corona, Stella Artois, uh, all these different kinds of beers here too. So they own a lot of different beer. They also own 
a significant part of this wine company too. And what they are really into is those kind of sin stocks, right? So stocks that invest in what we enjoy doing that might not necessarily be good on our wallet, but people are either addicted, unfortunately, or they just enjoy it. So they also make products, as I understand, that help you stop being addicted to things. Like they, I think they have patches too. They sell patches and different kinds of replacements to tobacco and stuff like that. So this is a company where at first I thought, wow, I don't think they have much room to grow because of the fact that they're in tobacco, but they own such large portions of these other companies too. I think that they're going to do pretty well and they have a pretty solid balance sheet. They've been paying dividends for 50 years and growing. They've been growing their dividends for 50 years. They have been growing over the last 10 years at 10.4%. And when you pay out your dividend for 50 years, you're called a dividend king. So that's what that's the term that they give to someone that has increased their dividends for 50 years in a row. None of the other dividend kings have a close to as high a dividend yield as Altria Group. So usually they cut it and they keep it really low and then they'll just increase it like a cent each year, even if they can do more, just so that way they can say that they increased it each year. But Altria Group really shows that they are trying to give out a lot of money. As you can see here, they pay about 8.2%. And this is the one that I don't own, but I've really considered it. And if we look here, they've returned an insane amount in dividends here. And I think they're gonna continue to do this so this is a company that I'm considering. Uh, I don't think that it's like a really sinful stock to own. Uh, it all depends on your beliefs, but I don't think that it's necessarily that bad. They sell wine and beer and stuff like that too. So that is a company that I'm considering. The next company is actually AT&T. So this is a company that I own. As you probably know, they are a cell phone company. They provide wireless networks, cell phones. They also own several different television networks. They merged with Warner Media or bought Warner Media a couple years ago. They own HBO, TBS, CNN, Turner, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers, New Line Cinema, and many other things. So I think this is a company that's really big into media. They've got their hand in a lot of different pots. So I think that they're going to do well into the future. They've had some questionable acquisitions and prices that they've paid for companies. But I think that they're one of the largest carriers in the United States. I think that they'll do well going into the future. They do have a good amount of debt, though, which is a little bit worrisome, but they do have really nice dividends. A lot of people use them as a staple to their portfolio, so they really like them. They pay about 6.87%, and this is a company that I don't have a large amount of my portfolio in, but I think it's just going to be solid over the long term to continue to pay out nice dividends. And they've been growing their dividend for 35 years, so they have a really good track record with this. The next company is one that you might not have heard of unless you've been watching my channel or you really like the stock market, and that's Innovative Industrial Properties. And I will say, this isn't at a 5% dividend yield right now, but when I bought it, it was up around 6 or 7%. So this company also works in the MJ space. They are a company that will go up to one of those MJ producing companies and they will say to them, hey, we'll buy your building because you have a really hard time getting lending so you can't expand unless you get money coming in. So we'll buy your building and lease it back to you. So they'll go and buy the building. The tenants will then be in it for 10 to 15 years because they do triple net leases. So that means that they're in it for a very long term contract. And then they also do all the maintenance on it the tenants do and they also pay for like their property taxes and other stuff like that so it's kind of a cash making machine right there and these companies have a really hard time getting lending so IIPR can charge some higher rates for this so they have been growing very heavily I bought in when it was maybe about $60 or $70 a share they're at 4.3 percent dividend right now but they've been able to grow this pretty well over the last couple of years so they only have two years of growth, but they haven't been around all that long. And as you can see here, they're continuously upping it. So they're up to $1.06. And when they started, they're just at 15 cents. So this is a company that I own and I'll hold on to for a while. I think it's going to grow quite well. They've been able to grow their revenue and their net income really well so far. Now, the next stock that I want to look at 
is one that you probably have heard of, and that is Foot Locker. So Foot Locker is a company that I think a lot of people sleep on because they hear Foot Locker and they think of a shoe resale store or a shoe sale store, but they also own Champs, which is kind of in the same space, but they also own East Bay. So if you're not into high school sports or college sports, you might not have heard of East Bay, but they are one of the largest like cataloged athletic wear companies. So they have a catalog that they give out and they have so many different options for colors, for sizes, for uh, different kinds of styles. And you can buy pretty much anything off of that catalog. They also have a website. But I think that Foot Locker has a really good balance sheet. They have 900 million or so in cash and they're about a $3 billion company. So they have a lot of money and they have a really good history of dividend yield. So I bought this when it was just about $20 a share. So back then the dividend yield was up around 8%. As you can see here, the payout ratios can be kind of thrown off recently because of the fact that we have had such turbulent times with our earnings just in the last quarter or two. But as you can see here, they were growing this for 10 years in a row at about 11.5% over the last five years. So this is really a priority for Foot Locker. And I think that they're gonna to continue to do this in the future. And I think they'll be able to transition to more online sales. But I also think that people really enjoy trying out shoes in person. That's one thing that people tend to stick to. Like you can buy technology through Amazon, but a lot of the time footwear people like to try on first. So I think that they're gonna do well. The next stock that I wanna talk about is actually an ETF and it's SPHD. So this is an ETF I own and I think that they're gonna do pretty well into the future. They are a high dividend, low volatility ETF. So what that means is they take the 75 highest yielding S&P 500 companies, so 75 of the largest companies in the United States, and then they measure how much they go up and down and fluctuate in price and they take out the 25 that fluctuate the most. So they want very stable companies that don't go up and down in price very much, and these are the top 50 of them. So one thing to watch out for in SPHD is the fact that their expense ratio, what you have to pay to actually own the stock, is about 0.3%. So that's a little bit high compared to if you're just buying normal stocks, but unless you have $100,000 in the stock, you probably won't really notice it. Even if you have $100,000 worth of it, you're paying $300 throughout the year. So it's not a massive amount, but if you have $1,000 or $10,000, you're not really gonna notice it that much. For SPHD, they hold a host of different companies, so it gives you a lot more diversification. And this is a company that was about $45 a share before the drop. Now they're back to $35, but they have a really nice dividend yield right now still. And I was able to buy some of this too when it was really low, but they pay about 5.4% now. They've been able to increase this pretty significantly over the last couple years. So as you can see here, they've been increasing it almost every year here. They dropped down a little bit in 2017, but they're an ETF that really wants to just pay out as much as possible. So that is a good solution for you if you're looking for that. Now the last company I wanna talk about is something that's a little bit riskier, just because it is a REIT, which is a real estate investment trust, but it's Realty Income Corporation. Now this company pays out monthly dividends, so if you wanna see a dividend go into your account every month, this is the company to go with. So is SPHD, they also pay out monthly dividends. I own both of these, but this is a company that has really high grade tenants, so it has really good tenants in their companies. They rent to companies, not towards individuals, so this is a company that has really focused on building their dividends over time too. As you can see here, they have a high payout ratio, but with any REIT, they have to, uh, typically they have to pay out a certain amount of their money in dividends just to be able to classify themselves as a REIT. They've been able to grow their dividend really consistently, so about 4.5% over the last five years. They've been growing it for 26 years in a row. And this is labeled the monthly dividend company. So this is a company that you should take a look at. Let me know what you guys think about Realty Income. It's a company that I'm really comfortable with. And as you can see here, it's still at a pretty big discount from what it was. It's about 25% down from its peak. But I think this is a really solid company as far as REITs go. And as you can see here, they've been consistently growing over the last 10 years. And even before that, they've been growing over the last 25 years. And this is 
not accounting for any of the dividends that they paid out in the meantime. So let me know what you guys think. This is my list of six different stocks that are really high dividend yielding stocks. I really like these stocks and I, I pepper them in with high growth stocks. So I have a very small amount in penny stocks, maybe $500 of my $30,000 portfolio. I have maybe probably $5,000 or so in these dividend yielding stocks and some other dividend yielding stocks. I have probably another five to 10,000 in just high growth stocks. And then the rest of it is in index funds in some of my retirement accounts where I can't pick individual stocks. So that's kind of where I'm sitting, but let me know what you guys think below. I appreciate you guys watching. Again, thank you for hitting the like button and I will see you in the next video. Bye.